Hey everyone, Steve here and in this video, I'm checking out this Fusion Wireless Arcade Stick made by Powerade. Pickles the cat here will be helping me with the review. Just kidding, I'll get her off the table when she's good and ready. But anyways, this is a eight button arcade stick we can see here, made by the company Powerade who make a lot of modern peripherals for all different platforms. And I think the biggest selling point of this arcade stick is that it is wireless. Now on the channel before, I've reviewed the 8-bit dough wireless arcade stick for the Switch, which basically kind of took the arcade stick world by storm, but I haven't seen too much on the internet of this Fusion wireless arcade stick. So I thought I would grab one. It was just recently on sale for the Amazon Black Friday deal. I think I paid around 120 or 140 Australian dollars, which isn't too bad for a brand new arcade stick, especially given that it is wireless. So let's take a look around the box and see what we can expect. Picture of the arcade stick here on the front. This is an official Nintendo licensed product. So it's not one of those weird arcade sticks that is compatible with the Switch, but isn't allowed to say the Nintendo Switch at all. And it's good to know that it also works with the Nintendo Switch Lite, which I don't know why it wouldn't be, but I guess PowerAge just want to make sure that everyone knows it's compatible with the platform as a whole. We can see here a different design on the actual arcade stick artwork but that's actually because it's easily swappable, I think. On the side of the box here, they also are clearly showing how easy it is to remove the bolt up and mud the stick. And we do seem to have two included artwork panels. And you can see a little plexiglass or clear plastic layer there on the top as well. What we can expect to see, except for a broken box, thanks Amazon, is a D-pad, left stick and right stick toggle, a player indicator with an LED, dust cover for the shaft, removable clear cover and a face card, the Nintendo Switch system buttons, so that's plus, minus, home and probably capture, Japanese arcade style full-size dome buttons, that's a lot of words to say, arcade stick buttons, get an arcade ball top, joystick with a metal shaft, battery mode switch, don't know what that means, power and flashing indicator, weighted metal base plate, so it's got some good weight to it, Bluetooth sync, three meter cable, that's good, cable storage and USB type C for the wired mode. Take the fight to the tournament. Nice. Although in a tournament, you probably wouldn't want to play wireless, right? You get the arcade stick, the Type-C cable. It actually comes with two batteries, it looks like. A manual and additional face card graphic. This thing weighs 1.83 kilos. You can see the dimensions there and it's compatible with Switch and PC by default, but only in the wired mode. So sealing the box, we just have three little stickers here. So remove this one, the main one here, and then we'll hit the other side. Undo the little seal, undo this tab. Let's do it together, three, two, one. And there we are, blocked by the camera. <laughs> nice, what does this say? That's cool, it's like a little postcard or manual or something. This is a pretty bulky box, but here we have the stick itself. Right off the bat, the buttons feel nice. Stick feels really loose to be honest, but that's okay. And these buttons feel all right. Let's get it out. We actually have the included batteries here, so that's cool. Didn't realize this actually runs off external batteries. I thought it would have an internal rechargeable one, but I guess not. You get actual Duracell OEM batteries. So it says not for retail sale, meaning that these are ones that they would include where batteries are included. So that's pretty cool. Two foam inserts here to keep the stick stable and secure. We can see here the additional artwork faceplate, and I'm sure there's a template online to make your own. And that's it for the contents of the box, so we'll get rid of it now. Okay, so with that giant box out of the way, we can finally take a nice good look at this stick. It's still got the protective film on it, so I'll try and get the best film peeling ASMR that I can get. Here is the other replacement face art, so we'll just have a go at changing that. But first, let's have a look at this included manual in this nice little package. Fusion Wireless Arcade Stick. It's kind of the same thing that we've already seen before. Thought it would fold out, but no, it's just stapled together. I'll just flick through this. Ah, there we are. So you will need an updated switch, battery installation, just AA batteries, wired mode, use the USB cable. There's a sync LED. There's an LED that indicates battery level. And then there's an LED that indicates which player you are. Fair enough. Pair this as any other normal wireless switch controller. There are six screws to remove to replace the stick art. You can just remove this joystick. It doesn't seem to be coming off yet, but maybe there's a little trick to it. Shows you how the D-pad toggle switch works, easy enough. And then just your usual health and safety things. And then the back of the manual tells you what you can expect again. Awesome, so I will be opening this stick up, but first impressions remain kind of the same. This actual joystick shaft is quite loose. The buttons feel nice. We do have a Vulix layout, so you've got the angled first four buttons and then the remaining four kind of just straight across, although you can see it is slightly offset. They're not directly underneath each other, which is something to note. So 
You know, there are only so many ways you can configure arcade stick buttons. But let's try and peel this off. Well, that was a fail. Not that satisfying when it makes a lot of squeaky noises, I think. But it's okay. Let's see if this is a fingerprint magnet. Not too bad. There we are, nice glossy top where you can see reflections if your light is bright enough. Okay, so before I even plug this in, let's just change the face art, given that it seems to be nice and easy to do. I'm holding the joystick shaft just with two fingers and unscrewing the bolt top, and it is actually coming off quite easily. At least I think so. It might just be rotating in place. What do they expect you to do? You know, the joystick is actually just swiveling in place like it does on any other joystick with a shaft cover. So I really don't know what they're expecting you to do. There's no additional instruction on, you know, to use the screwdriver method under the shaft on the bottom edge. You know what, let's just follow the instructions and remove these screws first. I'm sure there's a reason they tell you to do it. They come out very easily. It's like they're not even fully screwed in. Okay, so all six face screws are out. Okay, for the looks of things, there's definitely no way to take off this bolt up without removing the bottom plate, which is weird because they don't tell you to do it, but whatever. Let's just do that now. This is a good time to look at the bottom of the stick anyways. So here we have the Powerade logo. This is the battery door. And then we just have four more Phillips screws within each rubber foot. And then we'll just remove those and hopefully the bottom plate just comes right out. Luckily, they're easy to differentiate from the six top plate screws. I am not using my patented dumbbell method here. I'm just holding the stick up in the air. All right, so I've removed the four screws on the bottom plate here. Let's just see if it falls out. Whoa, there we are. Whoa, that's a heavy plate. Whoa, okay, and the uh, battery door or the cable door actually also just falls out, but here we are. Interesting, so they definitely want you to open this stick up, but they just don't say it in the instructions, which is interesting. But anyways, this is essentially the uh, tear down before we've even used the stick, but we see the joystick here. There's actually a spare, but it looks to be a spare restrictor gate here, octagonal, while it comes with a square gate, if you can see that. So square shape here, octagonal shape here with a yellow plastic, I think just so it's easier to differentiate. Is this where it came from? I don't know, I'll have to look at the footage. And they've actually handily labeled the way the wires are, which is totally awesome. They, they really want you to mod this stick, which is, I think, to be commended, because essentially you're paying for the PCB, the stick case, some base components, and then, you know, things you can use in other projects if you really wanted to swap these out. So I think that's quite a good value if you can get this stick at the right price. Let's just get some shots of what we can see up close here. So we've got a little breakout PCB for all the uh, main functions up here. Actually, no, this is the uh, USB cable. The breakout PCBs are under it, but this is the USB cable that'll go through this battery door when it's open or through here. Another breakout PCB there, and that handles uh, the actual wireless functionality it looks like. So just a power switch there, wiring diagram for the actual main buttons battery door again these cables aren't actually labeled with any switch readable names on the pcb it looks like actually yeah they are so they've got vsys so vsys is just the ground it looks like they all have their own ground which is i would say inefficient but you know actually nice a bit of a value add it looks like you get more wire for your buck cables 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 let's see what this bit of the pcb says glob top controlling the whole show here it looks like there are additional test points for uh, analog sticks like you've got right X and right Y, LX and LY. Interesting to note. I'm not gonna remove this battery door because I don't think there's much value in that at the moment, but if I end up doing a full mod on this and replacing all the components, which should be a quick job, then I'll tear down as much as I can. Here is the joystick that they're using. Don't know if it's of any notable brand or whatever. This has got the mounting plate, which looks like a JLF mounting plate. Hopefully those will be compatible. Again, a very loose joystick itself. So I don't know if you can just tighten that tension up with a spring. You can see the actuation of the switches themselves looks pretty good. I've just put the 10 screws that I've removed here in this little baggie just so I don't lose them. I'll just put the metal base plate off to one side while I remove the bolt top. And now is the time to use my dumbbell method. So just gonna replace my screwdriver with a flat head bit so I can get this stick out. Just gonna hold it in the bottom of the shaft here and twist the bolt up. Okay. <laughs> So once you get the initial tension and tightening off the bolt top, then it should come off easily. I guess you just have to be careful. I always end up stripping a little of the bottom of the shaft just because sometimes they're held on really tight and it depends on how sharp your screwdriver is. So anyways, the bolt top and the dust cover have come off. Whoa. The cable door has just fallen off as well, but that's fine. And there's nothing holding in the art in place, so it should just fall off. There we are, we have the art itself and the clear plastic cover. And here is what the stick looks like without any art. It actually looks pretty cool, to be honest. Um, you know, you see all these kind of holes here. 
for all the screws and everything and gives it a bit of an industrial look. Who knows, I might actually keep it like this and not replace the art at all. You won't really know what buttons do what if you don't have an art like this on but I kind of like the look of it. But let's just put it on and then I'll remove it later if I don't think it looks that good. It looks like the plastic cover and this art have kind of just stuck together via static. So I'm carefully removing that. I could sense a bit of static keeping those two together. Here is the plain red art. Here is the new kind of wavy inky art. Just put that on like that. That's upside down. <laughs> okay, that should be it. Now I actually want to do something else. I want to replace this bolt up actually while I'm here. So some of you may recall, but I actually have these two joystick assemblies from the Hori Compact joystick for the original PlayStation and the Hori EX2 for the Xbox 360. Now, <laughs> I don't know if the uh, lime green or light green is gonna go well with this stick. Just doing a bit of a visual test, I might just replace it with a black ball top. And I reckon this actual clear blue shaft cover might look nice too, so let's have a go with that as well. So just unscrewing that, I won't need to use the screwdriver trick here because there's no shaft cover or I can just access the bottom of the shaft anyways. Okay, so that shaft cover clearly doesn't fit. That's fine. So I'm gonna have to use the Power A one, putting that back on. Our new black ball top, hopefully this does fit. There we are, looking smarter already. And just off camera, I retightened the screw at the bottom here to make sure that you can't just spin this ball top off with your hands. So that'll do it for this quick cosmetic mod to the ball top and changing the faceplate art. So let's put everything back together. The extra restrictor gate they had had a tendency to flop around and just fall out when the stick was disassembled. So just have to make sure it stays in its right place over here. The cable door as well only stays in when you have the base plate on. And I think that's everything. So it's time to put the base plate back on. Just making sure it fits nice and snug. So I'm gonna put the four screws on the feet back in. Bottom screws are done, time to put in the top screws again. And then I'll just store the ball top that came with the Power Ray stick on the shaft of the Hori Compact joystick. And then I'll put the original art back in this plastic pocket to keep it nice and safe. Okay, so that's probably enough messing around and looking at the internals of the stick and how easy it is to mod. But obviously you can see it is very easy and they kind of make it so simple for you to replace the uh, ball top and the buttons or even the joystick really, if you are comfortable with rewiring things. But let's just take a closer look at the components here. So. This is the kind of the top control panel. You've got the joystick toggle there, the player indicators and your main system buttons. Again, we've got the action buttons. Using the official art, it is still nicely labeled. The fusion brand by Power Ray. And I gotta say with the black ball top, it does look quite smart. And they have engraved the dust washer with their logo, which is cool, but I wouldn't wanna use it in a stick that I've fully customized. Taking a look around the base of the stick, we have the cable door here. So the cable fell out when I disassembled it, but I'll put it back in. This is the sync button and the uh, sync LED. And this is the wireless on and off switch. You can see the uh, USB-C port there. And then a lot, one last bit of Fusion by Powerray branding on the wrist side of the stick here. So there we are, I'm gonna test this out on PC using the cable and I'll test it wirelessly on the switch. For reference here is the included USB-C cable, or at least USB-C to USB-A. Got a nice Velcro cable strap here, but this cable is PowerA branded on the USB-A end. So we'll open up the cable door, plug the cable into the little port, that should be fine. Then kind of put the cable through here and hopefully that's nice and secure. Okay, so you probably already know what this is. We've got the USB game controller here on Windows 10. And the toggle switch here is set to left stick mode. So that's why we are getting X axis, Y axis. Nice movement there. If we switch it to D-pad, point of view hat. And then if we switch it to right stick, the Z axis and Z rotation, everything works perfectly fine. Let's just leave it on the left stick. So I've got a button here for plus. Capture is a button. Oh, home is a button, sorry. Capture is a button. Minus works. One, two, three, four. Or whatever, four, three, you get it. And our eight main action buttons. Ooh, they feel kind of crunchy in a good way, like really clicky at the end. Everything feels good. Yes, this uh, joystick shaft though is quite short. You know, it's not, it's, it's this tall. I don't know if that's a good reference. Not a lot of space for your fingers under the ball top if you like to hold it like this. And a very, very short throw. So actuation kind of right there. And these buttons kind of feel far apart from each other now that I think about it, but that's all right. We'll get used to that. Okay, so I've loaded up King of Fighters 2002 on Steam. Playing from Australia, I've honestly never been able to get an online match here, so it looks like it's just arcade mode. The button bindings seem to be working all right. I mean, plus was start here immediately. That is the wrong button. Should be pressing A. 
Just configured my buttons here. I'm not sure if this is the official best way to map it. Although actually, I could map them four across here. I might do that, but I've just used the first four here. Let's map them four across, why not? Actually, never mind. Let's just go light punch, strong punch, light kick, strong kick. Let's just do single play. I'm not really trying to have a three on three match here. And Terry, because I am basic. Again, the short throw of the joystick is pretty interesting. Makes it feel nice and compact, although this stick is so large. And then my hand is on the left edge of the stick, like it's kind of falling off. So that may be the way I've just got it configured because I am trying to film it. And these buttons are actually kind of countersunk into the panel here, which is interesting because I guess you won't accidentally press it, but you do have to very thoughtfully press it, which isn't a bad thing. Oh my God, it looks like I might actually get a match. I reckon this guy's gonna kick me out though, for sure. He's gonna not play, that's fine. I see how it is, getting a lot of lag. Oh God, he's, he's playing. Shit, he's gonna beat me, he's gonna beat my ass. God, oh God, this is so scary. Oh God. Oh God, nice combo. Oh, mid then low, good to know. Man, this guy's gonna beat me. Anyways, good test on PC. Uh, the stick is what it is. It's a nice stick. Um, let's test it out on the Switch and really test this wireless functionality. Okay, so I've unplugged it from the PC, open the cable door, unplug it from here, close the cable door. It's got the battery compartment. I'm gonna open that up. These are the batteries it came with. I have to unwrap those actually. Okay, so as always, those batteries in plastic were a pain to unwrap, but here we are. And now the stick is wireless. Cable door back in, battery cover back in. Let's just turn it on and see what happens. Nothing. There is every chance that these batteries are just straight up dead. So let's remove those. I don't know if these batteries are good, but they're probably worth a shot. Oh, okay. Wait, I actually have to press the home button. Maybe I should put those other batteries back in. Okay, so the batteries that came with did work. Good to know, you have to press the home button to turn it on. So I'm not gonna bother plugging in my switch into that Hori monitor that I have. I'm just gonna use it in this desktop mode. Hi Pickles again, she's gonna attack me. Okay, so I've just got the tablet part of my switch up, no Joy-Cons attached or anything. So let's see if this pairs easily. I always forget how to do this. How do I pair things? Ah, cool, awesome. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna check the buttons are right. So I've set it to D-pad mode, down, left, right, up. B, A, Y, X, R, L, Z, R, Z, L, start. Minus, and you can't test capture or home, but I bet they work. Plus minus, sorry. And just so I don't have to insert a new game cartridge, let's just try it with Guilty Gear. I just realized I'm not sure if the controls are right. Awesome, okay, should be good. Yeah. If it looks like I'm button mashing, it's because I am. <laughs> nice, again, controller doesn't feel any different, but it is nice to have it on the Switch, you know, another wireless option in addition to the 8-bit dough one. Awesome. Nice little test, feels good. Okay, so I reckon that'll do it for now. This was the Fusion Wireless Arcade Stick made by Power A. Had a look at the box, what it came with, comes with its extra artwork, and it kind of guides you through the process, sort of. In terms of modding this stick, you do have to undo the bottom base plate, put in your screwdriver, remove the ball top, undo the six screws up the top here, remove the plastic covering, remove the original art, and there's a template online for you to use to make your own. All in all, I think this is a pretty decent product if you can get it for a price that you can accept in terms of the parts you're getting. You know, you're not getting any kind of high quality or industry standard Japanese parts, I think. But you do get, I guess, a base and a system to work with that is really beginner friendly. I think the only thing left to do for me for this mod would be, I guess, to replace the lever with something a bit taller, a bit of a longer shaft. Then you replace the buttons with ones that you like. And so it allows you to test out a lot of buttons really fast, I guess. Designing your own custom art, I do like a bit of Photoshop myself, so I will be doing that. But yeah, it's a nice inoffensive black case that you can really run wild with in terms of putting your own creativity into it. Anyways, that'll do it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I'll answer as much as I can. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like. And if you're not already, I would love to have you as a subscriber. And please be sure to check out the other videos on my channel as there's a lot to see. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.